Welcome to Garden Delights. I'm Susan Howington, Family Consumer Science Agent with the Henry County Cooperative Extension, partnership with the University of Georgia. We've got a great show for you today. We're going to talk about turnip greens. We're going to make a turnip green casserole that I hope you'll like. You're going to hear from Frank Hancock, our Agriculture and Natural Resource Agent. He's going to talk about composting, and I hope if you don't have a compost pile, you'll start one after you hear all the good things he tells you about composting. We'll see you back in just a little bit. We're going to talk more about turnip greens and that wonderful casserole. Welcome back to Garden Delights. We're going to be talking about turnip greens today, and we're going to be making a turnip green casserole. And I hope you're going to like it. But let's talk about what's so wonderful about these turnip greens. When you're growing turnip greens, it takes a good bit to make any kind of casserole if you're just going to cook them on top of the stove. And you can eat a lot of those turnip greens with very little calories. So in about, about a half a cup is 30 calories. So you can see that you could eat two cups of those turnip greens and not put on a lot of weight because they're cholesterol free, they're fat free, they're very low in sodium. But the good things are also good, good about those turnip greens is they're high in vitamin A and K. And we know that vitamin A helps us with our vision, development, all those good things that we need for our body. It is great in iron, um, so we all need iron in our body. But one big thing that this turnip green is good about is calcium. It is loaded with calcium. So if you're looking for ways to get calcium in your diet, like your kale, your collard greens, um, your cabbage, don't forget to put those turnip greens at the very top because they're very, very high in calcium. This is the time of year that turnip greens are grown. So we want to make sure that we are thinking about a garden, thinking about growing those. Now, when we select our greens, whether you buy at the grocery store or in your garden, you want to make sure the leaves are not over mature. They want to be really crispy. You don't want to have any yellow on them. You don't want to see any kind of damage from insects. You want to make sure that they are looking really nice, um, crispy, that bright green color. All those are going to be important when you're selecting those. Now, storage, they will keep in your refrigerator for about three to five days. But when you're getting your turnip greens, they grow in the ground. So we got to think about that. Think about the soil. Think about all that's going to be on those leaves. So it's very important when you're getting ready to eat those turnip greens, you have to wash them. And when you're going to wash them, you've got to not wash it one time, but several times. That means that I'm going to wash them, I'm going to rinse that water out, and I'm going to wash them again, rinse all that water out. So you want to get all that soil out of there. So I'm going to do it a third time also to make sure I have all the grit and grime off those leaves. You do not want to soak them because you don't want your leaves to become very limpy. And once you've done that, you can, you can go ahead and cook them. But let's say I don't want to cook them and I just picked them. You can store them in your refrigerator for about three to five days. And that means don't put any water on them because you don't want them to come limp. You want them to stay fresh as possible. And put them in some kind of container that's going to keep airtight that you can put them in your refrigerator to store them. Same if you're going to buy them at the grocery store. If you want to prolong them before you decide to cook them. And turnip greens, they freeze wonderfully. Um, they, um, all you need to do is blanch them for about two minutes. If you have collard greens though, it's three minutes because they're a little bit tougher on the leaves. And then after that, you can um, take the liquid off of them, put them in a Ziploc bag that's, that's some kind of freezer type container, put them in your freezer, bring them back out the new year, and you've got a wonderful green sitting right there for you to prepare in the winter months. Just to let you know, if you let these leaves go too long in that garden, they're going to become tough and then they're not going to be able to be able to use those. So what you want to do is when you're preparing that garden for the next go around or whatever you're going to plant, you can take those extra leaves, take it and put it into a compost pile, and then you've got something started. So we come back, and you're going to hear from Frank, and he's talking about those compost pile and how to start one. And if you don't already have one, he's going to tell you how to get one started. This month, we are talking a little bit about turnips. Susan's going to be cooking us a, a, a dish out of turnips. Turnips are one of those uh, fall or early spring season crops. You probably get a better crop in the fall. You would have planted them back in, 
end of August, first of September. Uh, they're better when the greens are, are more tender or younger, and also the uh, turnips themselves are better when they're smaller. But uh, she's going to be talking about turnips. I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk a little bit about compost today. Um, compost is something that, that happens. Uh, this is Mother Nature's way of, of breaking down things, the organic materials that are no longer uh, needed, like, like tree leaves, uh, grass clippings, uh, waste, uh, vegetable and fruit waste from the house or, or in the field, either one. And so this composting, uh, it requires a little bit of thought into how you balance your pile out. Now you can, there's a couple of ways to do composting. One would be a colder method where you just pile your stuff up and you wait till it decomposes and then you can use it. That could take a year to two years for that to happen but the compost would be just as good when it's over with. But what we want to talk a little bit about is how to build a compost pile that's going to build up a little bit of heat so that it, it would kill the, um, any weed seeds in there, it would kill some, some pathogens that might be in the, in the soil. And so uh, as we go along here, we'll get into the hot composting. Things that you can put in a compost pile you can put waste from the house, the vegetables, uh, fruits, and that sort of thing. You don't want to put any milk products in it. You don't want to put any meat in it. You don't want to put any, any animal feces in it like dog and cat, and certainly no human kind of waste would ever go in the compost pile because they can have harmful bacteria in them. So we're talking, when we talk about manures, we're talking about chicken and cow and horse, and, and those can apply a little bit of nitrogen to your mix to, that helps, helps this thing operate. These, these microorganisms, mainly starting off with the bacteria, they require about uh, eight, eight carbons to one nitrogen uh, in order for them to, to, to live, and then we use about uh, 16 more to, uh, to do the uh, work that they do in, in the decomposition process. So if you go too heavy on the carbon side, which would be your brown things, things like hay and sawdust that have high carbon content, little nitrogen content, then you, you get into a situation where it takes a real long time for them to decompose and the pile probably won't get hot like you'd like for it to. So you gotta add a little nitrogen to it. Uh, some things like, like hay and sawdust uh, might be more bulking materials that you add to keep air circulating because in a compost pile, you got to have some, some oxygen, you, you got to have a little bit of moisture, and then you got to have the compounds that you're trying to break down. Generally speaking, you're going to get all the microorganisms you need out of the stuff that you put in the pile. They, they're just going to come with it. I know there's products out there to enhance your compost pile and all that, but, but you're really not going to need anything additional to what you're putting in it uh, as far as waste is concerned. But this pile is finished. It's cooled off. It's ready to be used. So you can use it to build up your soil. This is is good organic material to be adding to your soil and it'll work really well in, in building the soil up to grow things that uh, cuts down on the, on the amount of problems you have because healthy soil makes for healthy plants and therefore you don't have to deal with a lot of diseases. Now, as this stuff gets started, the bacteria, it may start off cool with some, some cool a bacteria that works in the cooler climate, then as the pile gets hot, 100, 120, 130 degrees, then some uh, heat-loving bacteria will take over and they'll start the decomposition. Then as it starts to cool down, you'll have things like uh, centipedes and uh, millipedes and earthworms and those kind of things will come into the pile and they'll, they'll start finishing the process off as it cools off. So. The end result is you wind up with a really good product to put in your garden. 
I'm going to, I've started building a pile right here and I put some hay in the bottom of it. The hay is going to help us with a little air circulation in the bottom. It's a little slower to decompose and I've put about three inches of, of leaves in here. To this, I'm going to add some household waste here that uh, is going to be uh, some green material. It'll help us with a little bit of nitrogen and, uh, and then uh, we will We'll put that layer in there. As you're building up your pile, I've got another bucket here that has uh, a little bit of fruit in it and some, some vegetable components. And I'm gonna put that more in the middle of this pile because this kind of stuff is, is bait for rats and other rodents and things to come and try to eat this. So I don't want this all out on the outside of my pile or I can build a, a rodent problem up by how I construct my pile. After I put that in, I've got some fresher horse manure here that uh, I'm gonna put around on top of that that's gonna give us a little bit more of a nitrogen source in here in this layer. and. Uh, then to that, I'm going to add a little bit of compost. And the compost layer is just going to be, and there's a, a good example right there what's in this finished compost. You see this earthworm we got coming out of it right here. And uh, you'll see a lot of, a lot of other insects. It's, you got your own little farm when you're doing a compost pile. You can just stand out here for hours and watch this stuff. So now I get some of these organisms in here from, from that layer of compost that I've put in there. Now I can come back, and put me another layer of leaves. I don't want to go I don't want to go too heavy on them and, and make something that's not going to do what we want to do. Uh, and then we can just kind of go on from there. More household waste can come in. Another little layer of, of some fresher manure to bring in there to help that. As we go along, a compost pile needs to have enough moisture in it that would be like a, a wrung out sponge. So not a whole lot of water, but it can't be too dry. So we'll add us just a, a little bit of water to it right here. Now, out in the open, this is usually gonna get taken care of by rainfall and that sort of thing. But as I build up my pile, I'm gonna add a little bit to it. Come back in here with a, another layer of compost. And uh, now you can build these things. You can buy structures to put them in that'll turn them. This pile, as it gets hot, I'm gonna have to turn it. So what'll happen in this scenario, this wire form will be opened up and I'll take it and put it on the garden. It's ready to go. I'll turn it in on the garden. This pile right here is gonna get hot and then every couple of times a month, I may come in here and open this pile up and shovel it over on this side and then do it again back and forth so that I get it all the proper temperature to kill whatever might be in it that, uh, that would be harmful. So you do need to turn it. So if you're not willing to do that, then you need to just build your pile and let it let mother nature do its course and plan on using it a year and a half from now now what we put in here this is this show is in december the pile we build now we can't use it this spring it's going to be it's going to be on down the road even if it gets good and hot it's still going to take it on past spring before i can use it if this hay is not composted or these leaves are not composted and i put them in the garden 
they're going to go looking for some nitrogen because the, the bacteria that's breaking it down needs nitrogen. They're going to take that nitrogen out of the soil and probably return it back to the atmosphere. And so it's not going to help in that regard. You, you're going to have to come up with another nitrogen source to grow your plant. So don't use it until it's composted. Be careful what you put in the pile. Come and get the brochure uh, that tells you how to do this. Kind of learn how to do with it, small scale to start with. But what we're looking for is this, this good compost to build our soil up. And that's, that's the bottom line to the compost pile. So come on by the office. We'll break out the brochures and we'll, uh, we'll see what happens to this pile here in a few days, see if we can get it to heat up for us. Now we're gonna go back inside and see what Susan is fixing up in our turnip dish today. And uh, that's my favorite part of the program. I get to go taste what she's doing in there in the kitchen. We're gonna be making that casserole that hopefully you're gonna like. It's with turnip greens. And uh, one of my favorite greens as far as all seasons, when it comes into season, I love them. Um, and it's a really simple recipe. Now, it takes about two pounds of turnip greens, and I don't know if you've ever picked turnip greens, but it takes a lot of leaves to make turnip greens once you cook them because your pot could be very, very full of greens as far as the leaves, but once they start cooking, it really will cook down. So if you've got a lot of family to feed, you wanna make sure you have enough greens. And for this casserole, it takes about uh, two pounds of turnip green leaves. So in the recipe, it does ask for you to chop them up. So what I did is I, I've already chopped this up in this bowl here, and that's about the two pounds, but I need to add this part to it. And I am going to show you that when you are cooking your greens, you wanna make it to where it's a little bit chopped down because when people are taking a bite of your casserole, you wanna make sure that they're um, a little bit more bite size is what we're looking for. So what I want to show you is when you're cooking these um, turnip greens, you wanna make sure that you're going to cut them down. So for the recipe, it's going to tell you for those two pounds of turnip greens, you've got to cook these for about 10 minutes. So you just, you don't wanna cook them longer than that. You just wanna cook them 10 minutes because you're gonna end up cooking them longer in the casserole. And all we're trying to do is to get them to where they have a little bit of softness so you can chop them. Um, now, some people might like them finer. And if they do, you might wanna put them in a food processor and chop them just a little bit more. So all I'm doing is chopping them to make them a little bit finer. Um, so they'll be easier to eat in the casserole and also it won't take as long to bake it. So I'm gonna finish out with this and just add this back to this bowl and you can see that I already have um, these already chopped up. And this is a really simple recipe but a very tasty one. I wanna make sure I get all my turnip greens up back into the bowl too. Okay, so we're gonna go down step by step through this recipe. Um, I have my turnip greens and they're all chopped up now. This is about two pounds and I've water blanched them just for about, about 10 minutes is what you wanna do and that's just to get them to this nice green color right here and then you're gonna chop them up. And then we're gonna add some mayonnaise to it. And I'm just gonna take everything and add it to this one bowl. Um, so we're gonna, this is a half a cup and this is light mayonnaise. And if you're really trying to watch your weight, you could go fat free. Um, but this is light mayonnaise and this is a half of a cup, so we're going to add a half of a cup to it. And I'm going to end up stirring all this around together. Now also you're going to need um, two eggs and um, I've already beaten the eggs up a little bit just to add. You're going to add the eggs. And this is going to keep it to where it kind of connects together on the baking time and everything. So I'm going to stack that. Okay, we have our two eggs. And then we're going to add Parmesan cheese, and um, I am going to save up just about a teaspoon of cheese out because what I want to do is put it on top. So I'm going to leave just a little bit out before I put all this in here, and I'm going to use my spoon so I don't, so I can save it. So I'm going to save just a little bit, and this is just going to be for me to sprinkle on top with those breadcrumbs at the very end. So I'm going to leave just about that much. Okay, we have the Parmesan cheese, which is one cup. And then we have the horseradish. And this is gonna add a little flavor to it also. So this is your horseradish, which is one tablespoon. So we're gonna add that. 
And um, if you don't like horseradish, you don't have to add that, but you probably will not even taste it once you try this recipe. Now, uh, turnip greens, I told you you had calcium in it. And just from research, they say that looking at the calcium, sometimes that's what they think is what makes turnip greens have that bitter taste. So what we're gonna do, and a lot of people when they're just cooking them on their stove, they will add just a little bit of sweetness to it. So what we're gonna do is add just two, this is two um, um, teaspoons of um, sugar to it. So we're gonna add just a little something to add to it to cut that bitter taste that some people say that turnip greens will have is that bitter taste. And then just to top it off, we have a half a cut of a lemon and I'm gonna take it and I'm going to um, use the juice from this lemon and I'm gonna try to put it on there and I'm gonna try to cut my hand to keep the seeds probably from coming out on the, into the casserole because I don't think anybody wants to eat a seed. So I'm gonna keep pushing as much as I can of this lemon out. And um, my coworker tried this and he thought it was uh, vinegar. And some people do put vinegar in their um, turnips, but I said, um, no, it's actually lemons. And lemons just gets those enzymes in that turnip greens, it just helps it out so much. So we just put about a half of a lemon. And I think I just about have it all. And I just dropped my seed that I was trying to avoid right down in there. So I'm gonna get those out. So we have everything that I want to incorporate into the um, turnip green. So what I'm gonna do is stir this around. And as you can see, this is just gonna kinda connect all the turnip greens together and uh, just give it a little different flavor, but it's not gonna be like a thick casserole where you have like a soup or something in it. So all we're trying to do is to mix this around, make sure we have the eggs, the cheese, um, and if you're a big cheese uh, lover, then you may want to add more cheese to it. So it's really up to you. And like I always say on my recipes, you can take every one of them and adapt it to your, your likes and change it to your likes too. So I want to make sure that I have this really mixed in. Now I have a casserole dish. And in this casserole dish, I already have sprayed it with a little bit of um, oil so it will um, not stick as bad. I'm, I'm I always try to make something easy when it's time to clean up and wash something. I want to make sure that it's easy on that part. So I'm mixing this around and it's almost there. Just want to make sure I've incorporated it really well into, this, into the turnip greens. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're going to put it in a 9 by 13 casserole dish. And hopefully by now you've got your stove at about 350 and this is gonna take about 45 to an hour to cook. So that's the reason why I said, you know, when you have to do the 10 minute cook before you do the recipe, that's just to start the process because you're gonna end up cooking them longer into the um, casserole. So it takes about 45 minutes to an hour and it really depends on how you like as far as your texture because it's not gonna be just really mushy, it's gonna have a really good texture to it. So you will be able to get that taste of those turnip rings. But like I said, all that stuff that we just added to it is gonna make it even better. So what you do is you just kind of uh, put it out to your casserole dish and you can see that two pounds of turnips really fills up a nine by 13 casserole dish very well. So I'm just kind of moving it around to make sure I have it pretty even because I want it to bake pretty even in the oven. So this looks really good. I see that cheese and Gosh, I love cheese and um, Parmesan cheese. I like it a lot because it has a really good taste. Um, the last part of this recipe, so we have our stove on at 350. We're going to cook it for 45 to an hour. Last part of this recipe is it takes um, a little bit of um, breadcrumbs and um, this is about a half a cup. Before I do this, I do want to tell you that it depends on your taste. So I'm going to just salt this just a little bit on top and that the recipe will tell you just a little bit of salt and pepper for taste. And this really depends on what you like. So I'm just going to put a little pepper on it before I put the breadcrumbs. So I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of that on there. And then last, we're going with the, uh, the breadcrumbs. And I'm just going to take this half a cup of breadcrumbs and what I'm going to do is just sprinkle it right on top and try to cover up the top of those turnip greens. And this just gives a little texture, a different taste. Um, there's different types of breadcrumbs out there that you can get too. Um, so it depends if you wanna get plain or you can get the kind that has different flavors in it, has different cheeses in it. So it really depends on you and what you're looking for. 
So I am trying to get this about covered. I want to make sure I have it on the outer edge because we tend to do things. We sprinkle it on the center part and we forget about our outer edges because we want to make sure when people get something out of the casserole, they're also getting all those good flavors too. So this looks really good. That's about a half a cup of the breadcrumbs. Now what I'm going to do now is take just what I left in the bowl, which was the Parmesan cheese, and what I want to do is just kind of just barely put it around on the top of it. This just gives it a little bit more taste of that Parmesan cheese and also gives it a little bit of texture look with just the breadcrumbs on top. So I'm just going to put the rest of this and that's about a teaspoon um, of the cheese that I left out. And if you forget, it's not going to be the end of the world if you forget. So don't worry if you forget to put the cheese on top, but I always, you know, preserve just a little bit. So that's pretty much the casserole that you're going to be making. And as you can see, it's very, very simple to make and it looks wonderful before you even bake it. What I'm going to do is put this in the oven for 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and if you want to go 45 minutes and taste it, every oven's different, so you're going to have to really kind of test that part of it. Um, but I know for mine, I, I want to go that hour time because it just seems to be better and, it, and the uh, texture of the turnip greens is even better at that hour time. So I'm going to put this in the oven at 350 for that 45 to an hour. And when we come back, we will have Frank Hancock come and try our turnip green casserole. See you back in just a little bit. Welcome back to Garden of Lights. We talked about turnip greens today and we made a turnip green casserole that I hope you'll like. It turned out beautiful. And then of course Frank's here to taste it and I hope Frank's gonna like it. Um, has a little twist in that regular, just that boiling of turnip greens. So Frank, I'm gonna let you taste it. All you right, better I'm make ready. sure I'm ready. that you tell me you like it. Even if you don't, I'm kidding. Hopefully you will like it. So this is our turnip green casserole and I'm gonna take a little bit out too and taste it also. Do you like Parmesan cheese? I like most anything. Very good. Good answer. And I chopped them up so they're mm -hmm. a little bit finer. It's good. It is very good. Very good. Very good. Hopefully this will be a recipe that you'll want to try in your recipe box and put it there. It's today it's really good. It's very tender. Got a good taste to it. Check the website out and check out this recipe. It is called Turnip Green Casserole. You know, I've been doing a little research on turnips and one thing that I've discovered, especially in men, men that don't eat enough turnips are bald-headed. Uh-oh, that's not a good thing. I know it. I don't know if it has a lot to do with this, but but I've noticed that. Then and, a lot of people need to start eating turnip greens then. And babies that... Uh, that have to eat their turnips because they come in a little jar, they've generally got hair. Well, and you know, it has good vitamins that help with that growth too, so that's a good thing to eat when they're little. I also need your scraps for my compost pile. If there's any left. Okay. All right, we'll see you back on Garden Delights. Mm -hmm.